If you're like me and you just fumble around in the kitchen in the morning with no lights on, this video is for you because we're going to do better about what we're going to have for breakfast and we're going to put a little bit more thought into it so we can make sure that we're sticking to our calorie deficit. I don't really know why the fitness people have told us that we need to make a specialty custard in order to make healthier um, French toast. French toast is pretty simple, yes. Key to some really good French toast is always going to be some stale bread. I'm using this low carb one just because it's 30 calories a slice, four grams of protein, protein per piece. So this is a fresh loaf. I did take some out and let it sit overnight for my old loaf. And King, it's hard. So that's what you want out of your French toast. Get it nice and stale so it'll absorb, absorb up the custard. So we're going to make the custard. So we're gonna crack some eggs in a bowl. So, I have my egg. I have some egg white here. This is all I have left, so I'm gonna do this in the bowl as well. Egg whites are really just protein. And I'm gonna season with, this is apple pie spice. You can use just cinnamon, use pumpkin pie spice. I like these because they're a blend. And I'm gonna beat this bad boy. Okay. Then another major key is your milk. You see this one? 13 grams of protein. This is additional protein and to this. This is what makes it a custard. I'm gonna add some salt in. Just to offset the sweetness of that milk. Enhance the flavor. And lastly, I need my vanilla. I'm only doing a little bit because this milk is vanilla milk. But ideally, I don't like to put anything sweet in my custard for my French toast because that's the part that'll burn first. I want to just keep it simple. So I like to do one egg at a time and I'll add another egg if I need it because one egg takes you pretty far away. So regular French toast behavior. We're going to take our bread and our egg mixture we're gonna dip, and with this, you don't have to dip it quickly because you want it to absorb. So now we have our our pieces that's absorbing the custard, and I'm gonna be all wet in the middle. And we're gonna cook this on a medium heat. Look at that. Okay, in the pan. Let's also cook in some light butter. If you absolutely need some more protein, you can use protein powder in the topping if you ask me. So I have this casein, which is just pure casein. I'm gonna do like a half a scoop maybe. Half a scoop in this container. And we're gonna thin it out with just a little milk. It's gonna get really clumpy. So put a little bit more milk than you think you need. Mix this around. It's watery, but now it's getting kind of thick. Okay. So, 
suitcase and really absorb some milk. So it's really thick. And to this, you're gonna add in another spoon, another spoon, another spoon. To this, so whip. okay, there we go. Gently fold, gently, 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 gently. You could also add some Greek yogurt to this mixture. And I'm gonna eat my Greek yogurt on the side. Now we have this beautiful protein whipped cream. And just look at how good this came out. But on other days, um, if I don't know what I'm going to do, I'm just going to mix some cottage cheese and some yogurt together. And, like, I'm going to just figure it out later, okay? It comes out perfect every time. But some days, I decide to prep a little, like, a little sweet breakfast treat. And since it's fall, I decided this time I was going to make a sweet potato pie flavored loaf. I know this time of year, everybody's like, pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin. I'm not a pumpkin girl. And I know a lot of people are not pumpkin girls. So this time of year is dedicated to me forcing sweet potato down everybody's throat. And I'm seeing that people are starting to adapt it. I'm not going to say that they should be giving me credit, but I think that they should be giving me credit. Because, yeah, like, every year I put a sweet potato pie latte on the map. But now I'm going to do a sweet potato pie loaf. And this one is sugar-free. And it does have eggs, but you can swap the eggs out for all applesauce. That's what that purple stuff is that I'm using. It's actually applesauce with blueberries, but you can't taste it. This is the only flavor that I had. And for this, I will be using a protein, a protein pancake batter. That's what it's called. And I'm using that, like the um, the Kodiak cake one. And you're gonna use that as your base, so instead of the flour and everything, so that helps kind of lower the carbs and. No, I'm sorry. Lower the calories. <laughs> it, it may lower the carbs. I don't know. But um, it's going to lower the calories. And the other sweetener I'm using is allulose. And also, another good source of protein is going to be this milk. This is like the Fairlife milk. One cup has about 13 grams of protein. So, yeah, we're going to get a good amount of protein from this, even though it's like a sweet, non-meat type of thing here. But, yeah. The allulose is the liquid sweetener. It's going to help it stay a little bit more moist. The erythritol is the one-to-one -one, like sugar substitute. And I do recommend it if you ever had it. Honestly, honestly, what do y'all like to have for breakfast? Because I've been finding like swaps that are ingredients swaps rather than like whole food swaps that you buy already cooked. So I'm going to try to make more uh, swaps of things because the things that you buy in the store are nasty. So comment what you like to have for breakfast so that I can see if I can like make a little high protein, low calorie doobie doo for it. Okay, let me know. Oh yes, and Josu is my favorite little salt blend here. This one is the cinnamon vanilla from Condiment Clear. It's so amazing. And I just add a little bit of that because I already put both salt and a little bit of spices in here. But I like their salt better. It really helps bring up the sweetness. That's why you add salt to things. So it'll enhance the flavor, but like not make it too sweet, if that makes sense. I'm not sure. Salt is a flavor enhancer, basically. So yeah, so we got that all mixed in. And we're going to add it to a grease pan. I should have doubled this honestly because it was so good i should have made two loaves but uh yeah you see that uh it's all fluffy now <laughs> yeah so i'm gonna put this in the pan and we're gonna bake it i think i baked it for maybe like 30 minutes or so you just want to make sure the middle is set mine was set but then i kept moving it around trying to get my footage so oh please do better than me because i was really tripping with this one so yeah, I'm gonna use a knife to like get it cut out the pan, but it didn't work. So I kept like, <laughs> I didn't grease my pan enough, I guess. So I was like banging it around and that's why I got a little divot in mine. 
and then I decided to double down on it by adding this butter on the top which was not necessary but I thought it looked pretty and it tasted good I put some more salt in there some powdered uh, sugar with the vanilla in there that's real sugar so you don't have to do that if you want to keep it lower in carbs hey what's up with me in the carbs I mean calories keep it lower in calorie and yeah I just thought it looked pretty on the top of it but it didn't really change the flavor much because that uh, artificial butter is not really buttery flavored I should have added a little bit more butter extract to it okay so yeah so we have our beautiful loaf here you can kind of see the little divot now <laughs> please do better than me y'all I really be in here tripping I'm just trying to get my footage that thing did not want to come out I was taking forever trying to get this thing out but anyway yeah so uh, make sure you let it cool down some before you get it out the pan don't be impatient or, you know what, just leave the thing in the pan at this point because what, what's, what's the difference don't make? Just don't be overcooking your food because it'll cook a little bit in the pan and it's going to stop. And then just let it cool down. It didn't really, really need to be on that cooling rack because I wanted this for breakfast. But I'm making it at night, so I was supposed to eat it till the morning anyway. But yeah, it do look good when I rub all this stuff all down on it, but again not necessary that is why i'm giving it a massage to make it look better because it was it was i don't know maybe i should have done like a a powder sugar drizzle instead i don't know why i didn't do that honestly but still 10 out of 10 if you like a sweet breakfast this is definitely something you need to put high up on the list very high try it like right now okay but then if you just like want a normal breakfast and you have a little time in the morning this is what you really need to do you need to get you a pressure cooker and load that up with a whole bunch of oats i'm doing three cups of oats here this is going to be a lot of us you have a family this will make multiple servings load that up in your pressure cooker put about five cups of water and i like to do powdered milk because i you people always text me um uh, I like to do powdered milk because I like to do like half milk in mine. I don't want a like, full dosage of milk in there. Um, so instead of doing half milk, half water, I just do water and like a little bit of powdered milk. And then we're going to season it with some more of that Joe's Blue salt, the cinnamon vanilla, and some cinnamon because you got to give it some flavor. Here you could add the vanilla if you want to. I find that it cooks a little bit much. So, um... Uh, I like to just add that in at the end so that I can keep the essence of the vanilla and then mix this around top it with your water and then I pressure cook mine on I usually do it on low for about three to four minutes sometimes I do it on high it really depends on how I want the oats sometimes I want them a little bit more soupy if I want them like looser I'll do it on low my instant pot I'm sorry my pressure cooker I don't have an instant pot my pressure cooker does not have a setting to where I could do one minute for the oats so if you could get it down lower than three minutes that probably would be even better because I sometimes add a little bit more than the five cups of water just so that I can have like a slightly looser one but today was one of those days that I didn't want to really lose up one of them kind of in the middle so yeah I'm gonna pressure cook those on high today so that I can get that slightly looser well I, like, I don't want no hard oats but yeah so it's just like that's why I don't give strict instructions because my instructions change on based on my mood like you can see here that these aren't like soupy but I do like soupy oats so this is usually where I add like my butter and my vanilla in I just really didn't show that in the pot right here but yeah I wanted them to have a little bit more jiggle to them so I'm gonna have a little, little bit more jiggle to them and yeah and then you just start adding stuff to your bowl whatever is just tickling your fancy then you just put it in the bowl right then okay